Okay, well, welcome to this uh, healing class. And um, this healing class, um, you never know what's going to happen. Like I have no plan. I, I read a little bit before and I have of course my own experiences. Like, like the one I um, started today with was an, um, a realization that basically my happiness is not of this world at all. It has no connection to this world at all. I felt that so deep. And um, the, the attempt to uh, connect everything that you experience to, to your earthly experience is quite big. That's what I remember too, as soon as I had this realization. It's like you know it's okay to be completely happy that has nothing to do with this world. You don't have to connect to somebody or some event or some occurrence or something like that. No, you don't have to do that because your real happiness has nothing to do with this world. And um, yeah, it's not that that's something to be proud of or anything. No, it's more like, no, that's the nature of your happiness. The nature of your happiness is so incredibly completely integrated into your being that when you experience happiness really deeply inside yourself you know it is not has nothing to do with anything in that sense but it's it's your true experience of yourself and uh, this is pretty profound and and this doesn't fit into your frame of reference in that sense you you don't have to try to fit it in into your frame of reference because it has nothing to do with it that's the same with with the the experience of a real deep feeling of love for um, um a real deep feeling of love that you can have for s apparently someone but basically you're feeling love and um, and this is also an experience that is integrated in in your personal being in your in the deep yeah, in the deep recesses of your being and um, there was good for me to remember that because um, Otherwise, you, you, it's not that you contaminate it with an earthly experience, that's not possible, but it has nothing to do with it. It has no relationship with it. And um, yeah, I thought it was very important to mention it today because um, I, I was even more happy that I didn't have to connect it to anything here. I did not have to connect it to a person or a situation no anything it was completely free to be itself inside myself so yeah welcome to this healing class um, um, it's it's going to be amazing that's for sure because when when so many minds are joined in oneness you never know what is going to happen you know you never know what's what has been given and um, in joining together in this light in this light of healing um, yeah we just have to open each open ourselves up to receive and to extend the love that we are and like I said this love that you are this light that you experience has nothing to do with anything it just is completely connected to your personal being you know, the core of your being. So the little pieces I was reading today was uh, from the contemplative life. Um, since we're going through that whole chapter or the whole book, basically, in this year, um, on, on the Facebook um, closed group, um, I would like to start with um, uh, chapter three, which is the starting the contemplative life and uh, and let this be a completely new experience did you ever start your contemplative life you probably did but now you have a chance to do that again not to start all over again but to go even a layer deeper or to 
do it even more um, more conscious than ever, you know. So beginning the contemplative life, um, if we skip a couple of um, paragraphs, you end up recognize the universality of God. And, and that part is not so easy um, because it's like God, the God experience is so universal. It is, it is just for everyone. There's no exception to it. And that means also for you, whoever you're going to meet um, as an actual, say, right of this God experience. It is not that God is pouring his love over certain people and others not. So that's the same with you. You are, um, when you love, you love unconditionally. Otherwise, it has nothing to do with love. So to your in that sense, you're not able to judge whoever is in front of you, except to see Mr. Christ. That is, um, that's who he really represents. And so the universality of God is, is like, yeah, this God spark is in every one of us. There's no exception to it. The people you like, the people you don't like, the people you basically hate, or the people you despise, or whatever, it, doesn't, it really does not matter. Like the, the spark is in every one of us. There's no exception to it. So yeah, when you read the first line, the universality of God, it's like, oh, that's, that's a beautiful, lofty idea. But the practice of it can be pretty um, practical and very, um, yeah, you have to be honest with yourself. Like, hmm, that's not an easy thing to do all the time. Um, but luckily I'm, I'm not alone in this, that, that is the good part of it. I get all the help to, to perceive everyone in a different way. It's not that I have to try to cost what it costs to see him differently. No, no, no. Like one of the examples that Joe was giving too, is that he absolutely could not say love somebody and he, he, like respect him okay but loving was was a little bit too much to ask but then he surrendered into this by basically going to sleep as i recall and that he awoke with an experience of love for this person so it's like you get great help in all these steps that you take um on this path because by yourself, you cannot do anything. So not even that you cannot, if you don't feel the love for someone, it's not that you have to try and try and try just until you get successful or something. No, it's like you, you ask for help and you um, ask spirit to guide you through this. And um, because deep within yourself, you are willing to do this you are willing to love everyone. It's just that you don't know how. So I thought that was a very, very beautiful part of his, um, his talk of the universality of God. So yeah, this beautiful experience of love, this beautiful experience of your inner happiness that has nothing to do with this world can be extended to everyone you meet. And that is no contrast in what, I'm, in, in what I'm saying. No, it can be extended. By you accepting this love for yourself, you extend it to everyone. So that's, that's the, the ex assignment. That is the, uh, that is the exercise that comes with it. Um, let me see if I can read you some Yeah, there's just a lot of great stuff in there. Oh yeah, here. Low here, low there, but within you, and it makes no difference 
who the you may be. It makes no difference if the you is in a hospital, the you in a prison, the you in business, or the you in some art or profession. The kingdom of God is within you, and the kingdom of God is a spirit and not a super being, but a spirit. To recognize this truth constitutes the very first step in attaining spiritual light. The first step in attaining an awareness of the presence of God. If you cannot accept this, then you will have to believe that God is a respecter of persons and that only Jews have the presence of God or only the Baptists or the Buddhists. This is the rankest kind of nonsense. The presence of God is within you, whoever the you may be. So this is like the universality of God. The presence of God is within you, whoever the you may be. So I think that's great. That's a lovely way to say that. So thanks, Joel. That's really great that you say it that way. It's a very simple way um, to express the universality. So I'm, I'm happy to read that here with you. Oh, yeah, another part that was very interesting to me to read was your givingness of yourself brings the givingness of the universe to you. I'll read a couple of lines of this and I'll come back to you. When you have come to the place where you actually feel the truth of this, where you feel the presence of God in the air, in your body, in your business, in your home, in your competitor, or in the enemy across the sea or across the street, when you begin to perceive that, you are ready for the next step which everyone must take before enlightenment can come. And that is the realization that inasmuch as the kingdom of God is within you, it must be permitted to flow out from you. It cannot come to you, and you must, at some stage in your unfoldment, stop looking for it to come to you. And then he has the example of um, companionship, like are people looking for companionship? And he thinks people are not really looking for companionship, but are looking for a companion and they can describe it really well, which kind of person they would like to pick up. But companionship, he, he says, is like available everywhere, like in every encounter that you have you'll find companionship and in your silence you can have companionship so that cannot really be the problem but most most people are looking for a companion and not that there's something wrong with that but um, it is more like joe will use this as an example of um, as an example of this um, what i just read you i will see if i can recall that yeah it's more like the um it is more like the um, not so much waiting for something to come to you as more that you give to it you know so the only way to to be able to receive more is to give more the only way to receive more light is to give more light and that's why teaching is great because you you have no uh, idea what you're going to say you open yourself up for this and it will just flow through you and you can completely trust it and you start to trust it more while you're extending it So yeah, that's what I like about teaching. That is so. That's a, such an awesome opportunity to to be in the flow of God, to extend myself and the light through me. So yeah, the experience of the communion with God. That's where this is all about. This is is like going stepping back 
out of your frame of reference, stepping back out of the way that you used to think, stepping back out of the things that you think that you have to do before you can be in communion with God, because these are nothing but just the obstacles to, to receive the love of God. So yeah, and that, that is what make this, makes this like a healing class, is that I'm offering you healing. Because communion with God is what the healing is. By receiving it for yourself, you extend it to others. By receiving the love of God in this moment, it can extend to others. Like there's never, there, nobody is healed alone. So there's, it's by you accepting it, you have an incredible impact on people that you don't even know. So this is, this is my offering in this moment. Just take a moment to, to go deep inside and to ask for healing, to ask for light and love to come to you. The kingdom of God is within you. My kingdom is not of this world, so you don't have to bring anything of this world with you when you go inside. You can just allow yourself to go inside and connect with what is real. And it can be good to breathe a little bit. To release something or to to relax a little bit more, to just bring the light in. You can imagine breathing the light in via the crown of your head. So yeah, the love of God is pouring down on us in this moment. There's nothing really that we need to do for it except be receptive to it and wanting it. So the kingdom of God is within you. All the love of the universe you can find inside yourself. And from there on it extends outward. And it's the most natural thing to occur to you your healing, your reunion with, with God. I and my Father are one, and that is occurring right in the center of my being. My happiness and my the feeling of grace and the experience of grace that I might experience in this moment has nothing to do with this world. But by me receiving it, I extend it throughout the world. So there's nowhere where God is not. So God is everywhere, just as the love of God is. And you in your human experience, you try to focus on yourself or on, on you as a human being, as, an, as a human body in this world, while there's an a universe out there with love and light. So this is an opportunity to expand your, your vision of yourself, to expand 
the love that you are in all directions. There's no limit to it. It's an infinite way. Thank you. Okay, I'll read a little bit from the the second part of the um, your givingness of yourself brings the givingness of the universe to you. The kingdom of God is locked up within you. There is no way for one person to demonstrate supply for another because everyone everywhere has all that the Father has. Infinity to try to get something out there when there is nothing out there but space is folly. Supply is demonstrated not in the getting but in opening out a way for the supply already within you to flow out from its source, which is the kingdom of God within you. Illumination can come only to those who realize that the kingdom of God light, truth, wisdom and love is within. All that the Father has is yours and then just as you have to find a way to express companionship, so do you have to find a way to express supply. This we can do in many ways. The Master was indicated in the Sermon on the Mount that we should give but be sure that no one but God knows about our giving. Pray, but be sure that no one but God knows about our praying. Forgive, pray for our enemies. All this he gives as an activity that takes place within ourselves and flows from within us to the without. The entire secret of spiritual illumination is bound up in the realization that the kingdom of God is within and that we must find a way to let this imprisoned splendor escape. Therefore, whatever it is we are seeking, we must find a way to give it out so that even if we are seeking spiritual light, the way to gain it is to give it. So it is in spiritual teaching. Those who teach learn far more than any student or group or, or students because in the very act of giving out, there is a constant inflow and really not in. It is only that the infinite source is within, but it cannot flow out if we do not let it out. The moment we begin out, letting out a little of what we know, all the rest begins to flow, more than we ever were aware that we knew. So yeah, here we are. So yeah, it's good to teach, and I'm not saying that you should, but it's like the that's why the the classes after uh, this 
it's not really a class, but a joining and sharing moment can be very important because it's an opportunity to declare yourself. And um, yeah, declarations are very good for for your um, for your the growth of your certainty or your certainty of your certainty. Like the certainty is already there, but if you uh, exp start to express yourself, it becomes you know, solidated or confirmed inside yourself that makes it a little different. You don't have to be afraid of it anymore or you, know, you will overcome fear connected to that. And it can be a very joyous thing to do, so why not? You can do it in all kinds of ways, exactly your way. Do what you like. So yeah, it's pretty amazing what Joel is giving us in this moment. Joel teaches <clears throat> book after book and um, to, it's like I never read the contemplative life before we started using it um, this year. And so as soon as you start to focus on a little part of it, you see like how rich it is, how full of it it is, that you can even read a couple of lines and, and um, there's, yeah, it's just an incredible, um, say incredible pearls are, are available. And I, I really love that. That's, that's so beautiful. So thank you, Joel, for being present with us. It's amazing how, uh, how everything develops. Whether somebody is there in body or not, it doesn't, really doesn't matter. So yeah, let's come back to the experience of yourself. How are you doing at this moment? <clears throat> are you experiencing a presence? Are you experiencing light and love? Are you feeling all warm and or are you releasing or what is going on? Is this light touching you? Is this light bringing something in life in you? So I can hardly sit still. I'm always moving in my chair. <laughs> I, can't, I can't help it. Um, so yeah, it's moving me. That's what I know. And, um, I'm very grateful for that because I like to be moved. I don't have to do that myself. I love to be moved. I love to be taken over in that sense. So yeah, show me what's the next step. Show me what to say. Show me where to go. These are just the legitimate questions you can ask the whole day when you walk by yourself or when you just sit behind your desk or when you're walking the dog or whatever, it doesn't matter. Like there are infinite possibilities all the time to extend the love that you are. Maybe just um, I'm going to integrate one one testimony I received today from uh, um, Leonid from Brazil, um, and it was so lovely what she was writing. So I would love to read that to you. 
uh, some kind of uh, end to this class. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah. Um, okay, here we go. This is translated with a Google Translate out of, out of Portuguese. Uh, many in abandoning their frantic search for God by learning to stay calm and stop and stop repeating like parrots words and phrases meaningless one day awaken and you will find that God has already been by your side murmuring why do you not stop and you do not let me say anything how would I talk to, the, to you then in a moment of helplessness with no means of obtaining human help, abandoned, lost in the desert? If we listen to him, we will hear his voice. The place where you are is sacred. Where can I hide myself from your spirit? Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear nothing because you are with me. Even though I feel alone, I am not alone. Even though I feel helpless, I do not, I'm not helpless. Divine help is where I am. He does not have to look for me, nor do I seek for him. The kingdom of God is within me because I and the Father are one. God is not lost, and I'm sure he has not lost me. If I am here, God is here with me. This is a powerful meditation. We ask nothing. We ask nothing. We recognize the truth proclaimed by Jesus. Where I am, God is. Amen. So with these words, I would like to end this class. And um, hopefully I see you after this um, in the after class. And um, otherwise I hope I'll maybe see you on Wednesday at the meditation again. Okay, thank you so much for your presence and um, um, seeing you soon. Bye-bye.